Hi, welcome back again to the Jira Cloud Admin series and for the next video I am here. Today I am going to discuss the system. For this I will go to this Kog icon, I will click there and then I will click this system. So here we are and here we have lots of settings in the left sidebar. And here are the settings. In the general setting you can see we have the title, email from and the introduction. So what kind of title I am talking about. So this is the title uh, that you can see when I will hover in this tab and you can see uh, this is Jira. Let me tell you when I will go to the edit setting and if I want to change it Jira trainings and I am gonna hit the update button and here you can see it is changed from Jira to Jira training so I am talking about this title and you can change the email from here and and this is the introduction so where this introduction will come let me tell you when you will go to the dashboard let's suppose I will open this dashboard and here you can see we have one gadget name of the introductions and this is the write up that I have that I have written there so this is a wiki markup and you can see this is a wiki markup here so this is an introductions gadget that you can uh, you can apply this to your dashboard or you can put this into your dashboard now we'll come to the next settings which is internationalizations and here we have the indexing language and the installed language here so the indexing language this is English and these are the languages that already installed in Jira cloud and you can set the default language and you can set the user time zone as well and this is the default user time zone that you can set but remember when you will set the user time zone it will not affect your date fields like due dates or release date or any other date fields now we'll come to the options so here we are here we have lots of options or lots of settings that you can explore if you want to edit these settings then you can simply click on the edit section and these all the fields will be editable so like you can change your indexing language you can change like you do you allow want to allow users to vote on which issues they would like to resolve or you can you know set the logout confirmations uh, you can you know these are just on and off settings you you can do as per your requirements so these are the settings that i wanted to tell you about so it's up to you it's up to your organizations it's up to your requirements whatever you want but you can change it with the help of these general configurations under the system and whenever you change something then simply scroll down and hit the update button and these changes will apply to your Jira instance. Now we will check the advanced settings here. When you will click in the advanced setting then this particular page will open and here in this table you can see we have key and values. I would recommend do not change these settings just for fun. You should change these settings when you know exactly what you are doing. And even Atlassian is also telling you on the top like the followings are the advanced options and do not change them unless you know exactly what are you doing. So I generally change the Jira clone prefix and I don't change into the advanced settings and then until and unless I know exactly what I want from these settings. That's all about the general configurations, advanced and the journal settings. Now we'll come to the next settings which is audit log and this is the audit where you can check the activities, what kind of activities someone performed. So as a Jira admin, this is very useful for you because you can check like who removed the group, who updated the uh, projects and who changed the workflows, the schemes and the other activities. So you can come and check here the logs. Now we will go to the security sections and in the security sections we have project roles, global permissions and the issue collectors. So if I will talk about the project roles, so I have already explained what is project roles, how you can create the project roles, how you can add the project roles into the different video. If you want to watch it then check the link into the description box to know more about the project roles. The project roles are really very beneficial for the Jira admins. So go and check that video. 
Now we'll come to the global permission. So this is the permissions which apply throughout all the projects that you have in your Jira instance. So this is not a project specific permissions. This is a global permissions. So there are the few global permissions that you have like administrator Jira, browse users and groups, share dashboards and filters, manage group filter subscriptions, make bulk changes and the create team manage projects. I have explained all the global permissions in my another video. Go and check the link into the description box and watch how you can manage these global permissions. These permissions are very necessary to know as a Jira admin. Because if you are a Jira admin then you have to play and you should know about the global permissions. And even you can check the another permissions like project permissions uh, in the particular series. I have created a playlist where you can know more about the Jira permissions. How you can create, how you can associate them to the project and how you can uh, modify them as per your requirements. So go and check. Now we'll come to the issue collectors. So I have used the issue collectors in just four or five organizations. This is... Uh, not a uh, you know widely used feature of a Jira but let me tell you about what is issue collectors so issue collectors uh, help you to gather some informations from the other websites and these informations will be collected in the form of the Jira issues in your Jira even uh, you know the users who don't have the account uh, as a Jira users they can use this form so this is uh, all about the issue collectors when you will create a issue collectors they will give you some kind of a javascript code that you can embed into the websites and this will be working so this is all about the issue collectors now we'll come to the automation part this is a very interesting part and i will create uh, another video for the automation rules where you can learn how you can create the automations rules for your projects or what are the rules into the automation so I'm gonna cover all things in the part in this separate video because this is not a small topic that I can cover in this video but definitely I will cover this in in the Jira cloud admin series because this gonna be really helpful if you will work as a Jira admin now we'll go to the next settings which is user interface and under the user interface we have the default user preferences so these are the user default settings and you can change them with the help of the added default values. You can edit the value by clicking the added default values button. You can change the values as per your requirement and then hit the update button. You can read here like uh, if the user has not specified a preference then the values for the users will fall back to the default value set here. So you can set the user default setting. It's it's on you or you know what kind of settings you are gonna do now we'll come to the next one which is the default dashboards yes this is also a very interesting or a useful thing because with the help of the dashboards a uh, management can see what's going on in the project what is the real picture so I'll create the next video for that you know where I will co I will cover how you can create a dashboard, how you can create the custom dashboard, how you can add the gadgets and how you can make a beautiful charts and, and, and much more. So this is all about the dashboards and I'll, I'll definitely tell you how you can configure your dashboards completely and make it very useful for the management if you are working as a scrum master or if you are a Jira admin or a project uh, manager then definitely you need you know beautiful charts or reports not beautiful just a useful charts and reports uh, so that you can discuss the progress of a project to the management or to the team or to the stakeholder definitely uh, it is very useful thing so in this video I cannot explain it but definitely I will make the another video so that you can learn better about the dashboards how you can create and customize your dashboards as per your customers needs or and as per your team or your needs now we'll go to the next one and this is a look and feel so look and feel of your jira instance if you are working in the organization you can change the logo as you uh, you know to your organization logo so here you can do it and we have the two kind of settings you can upload it or you can 
you know fetch it with the help of the url here and you can change the title i have told you where you can change the title you can go to this uh, system and the general configurations and then edit setting you can change the favicon and the navigation color as well let's suppose now the background color you can see here it's white Let's suppose if I'm gonna change it to white to the purple and I'm gonna hit this update button and I will refresh it here I am. Wow, it's it's looking beautiful. So you can play around and you can change. You can change to the another color or you can revert it back. You can change the date formats here and that's all about the look and feel. And if I'll talk about the announcement banner, then you can see I have enabled the announcement banner here. This is a Jira training. You can write whatever you want to the announcement banner. And there are the two kinds of settings here. Banner is shown to the user or users can dismiss the banner. Then if I will open it, then you can see the cross icon over here. Uh, sorry. Uh, then I will hit the save button and then yeah here you can see I have the cross icon if I want to do it let's cross and if you will disable it then and then hit the save button and here I cannot disable it this kind of a small settings that you can do by yourself and this is the visibility level uh, you want to keep it private or a public then you can do it uh, you know according to your requirement now we'll come again to the left side bar and here under the import and export we have the backup manager so in the backup manager this is very important for a Jira admin and it's a lifesaver for us I just want to tell you two things if you are taking a backup for cloud you cannot use it into the Jira server otherwise it will create a lot of mesh one of my uh, junior did this even yesterday and you know everything was broken so so please don't try this and if you are taking a backup for the server you cannot use it to the cloud so this is a vice versa thing now we will come to the next thing and which is external system support what is external system support you can you know to get started click the product you want to import your project from you can see here so you can import your data from Trello, CSV, Jira server or uh, we have the other options as well you, this is a kind of a tricky part because if you are going to import your data from a CSV format then definitely you will you know face some challenges because because I also face some challenges sometimes so just try it out if you have CSV or if you want to uh, you know import your data from Trello or any other any other thing then you can do it with the help of this uh, Jira import widget now we'll come to the next and which is a import Jira cloud it you know the na name is telling you know use this method to import your project data users and media from the another Jira cloud site you can do it you can read the restrictions and here are the two options that you can choose you can merge your data with the existing cloud users or do you want to overwrite the existing cloud users so you can choose your options as per your need or as per your requirements now we'll come to the import jira server and this is same as the jira cloud right now i have a few license that's why it's saying so i'm gonna click it later i will read it uh, later in not in this video and you can choose the options as per your setting now we'll go to the next options which is migrate cloud site and you can see it is under beta I will not explain it in this video uh, in this video but definitely I will cover it in the future videos now we'll come to the mail sections and this is very important section for a Jira admin you can set you can see the global mail settings here what is email pooler processor and the database cleaner and now the next thing is uh, the outgoing emails uh, you want to enable it or you want to disable it you can do it with the help of this option and this is an incoming mail settings you can do it like you can set the email handlers and set up your incoming mail server 
and some kind of an advanced configurations as well like do you want to you know advanced mail loop detections uh, kind of settings you can do it from here and this is a send email setting and into the send email settings you can send an email to your users to your user ejira users you can select uh, one or more groups roles and subject whatever you want to write here and just send it you can do it from here now we'll come to the next sections which is admin helpers and these helpers are really helpful for the jira admin because with the help of the permissions helper you can check why the particular user does not have certain kind of permissions with the help of the notification schema you can check why that kind of users is not getting a particular kind of uh, notification so these are really help helpful for jira admins because with the help of these helpers we can find out the problem we can find out the root cause and then we can fix it you can uh, you know select the users and issues and the permissions and then you can find out the same settings into the notifications helper you can use it uh, to find out like whether users are receiving or they don't receive the notifications for the particular issue now this uh, second thing is the shared items and these are the filters and dashboards filters and dashboards are really helpful for the uh, teams uh, for the teams basically the development teams who are working on the projects and they are using jira so what are the filters filters are basically uh, saved search issues that you can use in future if you want to share those filters with the others or saved search with the others then you can do it if you want to check what are the filters and how you can create them how you can share them then you can check my another video and already the link in the description box now with the help of this manage filters you can check you can search the filters name here you can check the uh, of who is the owner of the filters whenever you want to share the filters it's your responsibility to check the owners and then the other permission so that if you are sharing a filter with the other team members they should be you know able to use that particular filters they should not see a blank screen because they don't have a permission so you can check and do it accordingly you can see find and modify the filters that are shared with any groups or roles so you can do it here you can uh, change the owner you can delete the filters and uh, these kind of the two things that you can do here now we'll go to the next one and which is the dashboards the same with the dashboards we have the list of the dashboards here who is the owner of the dashboards and it is shared with it is a private public or shared with the others and we have the two options you can change the owner and move to the trash now we'll come to the advanced settings which is attachment and you can do the attachment setting here uh, to add the attachment to the issues in a project users must have the create attachment permissions it means if the user do not have the create attachment permissions they cannot attach the permissions in the particular jira issue uh from where you can assign this permissions the create attachment permissions then you should go to the project permissions and from there you can do it if you do not know how you can do it then you can check my videos of the permissions and definitely you will be a master of the project permissions where you can set the permissions how you can add it and more the link into the description box go and check we have the other settings here whether you want to allow the users to attach that particular attachment into the issue or not and the maximum upload size right now it's a 1 gb but maximum could be a 2 gb and you can say we have the enable thumbnails and the gif supports you can do it with the help of the edit setting here and then cancel now what is the next setting next setting is events webhook services and the lexo rank management i haven't used the lexo rank management till now but i have used the webhooks events and services but these are the topics that i want to cover into the different videos because i want to go deep here but i i want to cover events webhooks and services into the different videos webhooks is really very useful for you so into the separate video i will tell you how you can create the webhooks and how you can really uh, use it 
integer jira instance so that's all about the system settings here that i have explained now into the next uh, videos we have lot of things like products projects and under the projects we have another lot of things to explain we have issues where i will cover the issue schemes workflows and how you can create your custom issue types and much more and the apps where i will tell you how you can add and manage the jira market apps there is a lot of things that i really want to cover in this series i would request you if you haven't subscribed my channel yet then please subscribe it and hit the like button if you really like this series and i would say share this video to the other so that they can also take the benefits this series going to be amazing so thanks for watching and we will meet to the next video bye bye for now